Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today we're going to talk about load capacity and what that means and what does it apply to. So if you're trying to design and build a deck and you have these local regulations, let's just say you're going to go build a Let's just say you're going to go get a building permit and they're asking for these different load capacities and you don't know what they mean. So let's go over those real quick so you guys understand. And while you're at it, don't forget, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, so load capacity is what's required to make sure that that deck's going to be supportive when you add a certain amount of weight. So there's a dead load and a live load capacity. So a dead load capacity is how much does the deck weigh? And on average, they're giving you like a 10 pound per square foot dead load. So that's the weight of the joists, the weight of the beams, the posts, everything that is required to build the deck, including the deck boards and everything else. So the dead load capacity is 10 pounds per square foot. And usually when we're building the deck, that is an easy uh, weight to be under so that you have additional weight that you can use like anything else, hardware fasteners, uh, brackets and all that stuff. All that stuff is less than 10 pounds per square foot. So that is your dead load capacity. Now your live load capacity is gonna vary depending on where you're from. So the national average is a 40 pound per square foot live load and live load is anything that's on the deck that's movable or that is temporary. So you may put like 50 people on your deck or you have a party and there's a lot of people, you might have coolers, you might have uh, barbecue up there and some other things, all that stuff can be moved or taken off the deck. Most people have to build to a 40 pound per square foot live load, but in our region, we are forced to build or comply to build to a 60 pound per square foot live load. So it's a little bit more. So we have to frame accordingly. Now to figure out that weight, uh, mathematically, we usually pay a structural engineer to do that. If you're into math and you understand the formulas and all that good stuff, good for you. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. For me, I just pay a guy because I want to make sure that we are building accordingly. And I've actually been short on a couple of beam sizes or joist lengths or things like that. Usually if your joist length won't meet that pound per square foot live load, you have to bring them closer together so that it will uh, meet the code. So just something to know while you're building. And then there's also another load that has to be considered when you have a concentrated load on your build. And that, let's just say you wanna put a hot tub on your deck or possibly an outdoor kitchen area or a big feature privacy wall or something like that. Something that's gonna add a lot of weight in a concentrated spot on your deck, you have to plan accordingly or add additional support to hold that weight up. You can't just take a hot tub and throw it on top of a standard deck. It'll never pass. It could fail. You could, the joist hangers might just rip off the side of the house and everything comes crashing to the ground. So you have to have additional footing support, additional posts and beams, and it has to be configured in a way that'll meet those loads. Concentrated loads can be a hundred pounds per square foot live load. So you gotta make sure that you're meeting those requirements. I would highly suggest you consult a structural engineer to help you compute those calculations. All right, so now that we've talked about the different type of live loads, what affects those load capacities and what parts of the deck do we have to think about when we're figuring all this out. And the first thing is gonna be your deck footings. Like if you're building a second story deck, you can't just go to like a Home Depot and pick up a concrete block and say, oh, that's probably good enough, cause it's not. You gotta make sure that you're putting the right size footings in the ground to support the deck. If you're attaching to the house, and you're attaching to some footings on the ground and going up with some posts, then the house is gonna take half the weight of the deck, but the other half is gonna be supported by the footings, posts, and beams before you run your joist. So you gotta make sure that you understand those loads. And there's also a load called a tributary load, which is 50% of the load of the tributary load will be taken by the house, and then the other half of the tributary load will be taken by the beams, joists, and footings. So make sure that your footings are sized accordingly, and once again, structural engineer knows this information and can give you really great ideas on what size footings you need. 
or you might end up going to helical piles instead of footings like a, a standard concrete footing or versus a helical pile because helical piles can take a lot more weight you're driving them deeper into the soil to refusal or to a certain torque specifications that the engineer again can help you figure out and you're able to build right off of the top of those piles another thing to think about are the post and the post size. So I've seen some really tall decks on four by four posts and it sketches me out a little bit. Sometimes if they're pressure treated posts, they can warp and twist and crack. Even six by six posts I've replaced before because they've cracked and twisted in the summertime because they're pressure treated. I didn't grow the wood, I didn't mill it, I didn't pressure treat it. All I did was buy it from the lumber yard, but for some reason it's my responsibility because that, that post twisted and cracked and there's no warranty on lumber. So sometimes we use structurally engineered posts that will not do that, and then we wrap them in a matching product like ASEC or PVC or whatever the client wants to make them look good. Probably one of the most uh, important structurally sized members that you're gonna use are your beams. And I've seen so many times when we tear down a deck that they've undersized the beam that is put up a four by whatever and thought oh four by eight on average can span eight feet a four by ten ten feet a four by twelve twelve feet but not every circumstance is the same so just something to think about that you got to make sure that those beams are going to be structurally sound for the pounds per square foot live load that you need to use for your deck and then after your beams come your joist joist sizes can vary from six it well, actually four inch, six inch, eight inch, 10 inch and 12 inches. And then your spacing can be 12 inches on center, 14 inches on center, 16 inches on center. You gotta make sure that your decking will accept the width of the joist sizing that you're trying to do. And then make sure that the length of your span of your joist are not too far apart so you're over spanning them and then that's bad for your frame again it's all about the structural loading and making sure that you follow the plan that you've decided to work with with your engineer and your local building inspectors if you're getting a permit for that deck and one last thing guys to think about is your ledger attachment you can't just take a board and toss a few fasteners in it uh, it's one of the most failed spaces on a deck when you attach your ledger to the house you got to make sure you're putting the proper amount of fasteners into that ledger to keep it on the house so that it supports it it does make a difference and depending on how many pounds per square foot your live load is you're going to have to put a certain amount of fasteners usually staggered high and low into the house to make sure that the ledger stays attached even in a seismic event all right guys so there's your types of load capacity and how to use them i hope this video helped you if it did please click the subscribe button and that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content thanks for watching this video have a great day